what to do when we failed God. Rally up. First off, you and I will fail God. We're going to fail God because we are human. And as human, we make mistakes daily. Constantly, I would even say. And the enemy wants to constantly remind you of your shortcomings and your mistakes. Why? Because he wants you to be feel distant from God. He knows that the further you feel from God, the less likely you are to reach out to him. And the less likely you are to reach out from, to him, the more you fall into his grasp. He wants you to feel condemned. He wants you to feel ashamed of what you did. But the Bible tells us very clearly that there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. We find that in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. You see, the Bible tells us God recognizes our shortcomings. God recognizes how imperfect we are, and he chooses to love us anyway you know why because god knows our limitations as human you see that's why god only acts of us to confess our sins you see in first john chapter 1 verse 9 to 10 it says but if we confess our sin to him he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all wickedness you see god is quick to forgive all he's asking for us to do is give a verbal confirmation. But a lot of times we don't want to verbally confirm that we have sinned or we have wronged or we don't want to confess to God that we have sinned. Why? Because of our pride, because of our fear, because of different excuses that we put, different lies that the enemies tell us. Because what we see is God asks us to confess our sin because it's a realization that we cannot do this alone. You see, the Bible even continues on in verse 10. It says, if we claim that we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that his word has no place in our hearts. You see, God is saying, look, I know you've sinned. I know you're imperfect. I'm just asking for you to confess your sins so I can forgive you and that you can be restored back to your place. That you can rest, so that you, our relationship can be restored, can be brought back together again. See, many of us, we are distant from God because the enemy has sold us on a lie that we should be ashamed of what we've done when God does not just look at our past, but he looks at our present and our future in him. So what should we do, brothers and sisters? You see, one way to remind yourself uh, when you're resisting sin, a pastor that was under taught me this, and, and these are the words that, that I go through when I'm struggling with a sin or I'm, or I'm dealing with something, is that in Romans chapter 8, verse 11, it says, The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And he told me this several times. He's like, the Spirit of God that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you. So whenever you're feeling destroyed, ashamed, um, uh, disheartened, remember that the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in each and every one of us. Meaning that this same Spirit that had the power to raise Jesus from the dead has the power to help you overcome your sin. You see, God is not just limited with you. Don't think that your situation is hopeless. Don't think that your situation cannot be solved because that same spirit lives inside you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. You say you are under no obligation. Uh, in John chapter 8, verse 33, Jesus says, uh, the Son sets you free. You are free indeed. That's another verse that you guys could claim. You guys can sit and say, you know what? The enemy has no power, no authority over me. You see, because a lot of times we think that by being righteous, we need to constantly do the right thing. No, the separates the righteous from the wicked is that the righteous and the wicked both fall, but the righteous get up or the wicked do not. And we find that in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. The godly may trip seven times, but they will get up again. But one disaster is enough to overthrow the wicked. You see, the righteous don't just fall apart every time that there's a disaster. The righteous don't just uh, crash every time there's a disaster, but they get up and they get up in Jesus because only through Jesus can one get up. 
So if you're feeling down today, if you're feeling like you're by yourself or you're feeling very far from God, I want us to pray together. And I want you to reclaim the fact that God has not given up on you and that the lies of the enemy will no longer have a hold on your life. Father God, we come before you. I ask you and I thank you for being with us even right now, Jesus. Even though we may feel distant from you, even though our sin has separated us, we know that all we have to do is call out to you, Jesus. All we have to do is reach out to you, Jesus. And all we have to do is look for your name and look for who you are, Jesus. We know that you come to us, Jesus, and all you ask us is to confess our sins. So we confess whatever sins are holding us back. We confess whatever uh, transgressions we may have caused, Jesus, because we know that you have set us free from these and that the enemy has no power over our lives. I thank you, Father God, because I know that you love me and you love those watching anyway, even though we are imperfect people. In your name we pray, amen. This has been Jonathan from Rise Ministries. I hope that you guys can join us on Sunday for our podcast with the In The Word show. Uh, it is myself and JP In The Word and Emmanuel. So I hope you guys can check that out. That's at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, God bless you guys. Be blessed and be safe. Hey, I go help him get up. Said if he ever need help.